Do low carb diets, including saturated fat in them, increase your cardiovascular risk? This is a really important question because so many people have seen benefit from low carb diets, which many include saturated fats, although they certainly don't have to. But even a low carb diet with high saturated fat has helped so many people improve their weight loss attempts, um, improve their diabetes control, and just improve their health in general. And not just from sort of clinical experience and anecdotal reports, but in, in organized studies, in randomized controlled trials and non-randomized trials, we see the benefits to low carb diets. But the concern is always, what about the saturated fat? And what about your LDL? Well, now we have a new study that, that casts even more light onto the subjects to say, maybe we don't have to be so concerned about that. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I want to talk about this new study by Dr. David Ludwig and his colleagues titled The Effects of a Low-Carbohydrate Diet on Insulin-Resistant Dyslipoproteinemia, a Randomized Controlled Feeding Trial. Now, this was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. This is a, a sub-study of the Framingham State Food Study from 2017 that, that concluded enrollment in 2017. And what they did, this was a really interesting study, they they took volunteers who were overweight or obese but did not have heart disease or diabetes, and they had them go through a run-in phase where they wanted them to lose about 12% of their body weight, in, in which case they, they lost actually about 10% of their body weight. At the end of that run-in phase, they randomized them to a low-carb, medium-carb, or high-carb diet and then followed them for another 20 weeks. Now, here's one of the things that's so interesting about this study, though. So many studies, you can advise someone to go eat low carb or advise someone to go eat high carb, and you hope they follow. This was a Herculean effort, though, because they provided all the meals. For 20 weeks, they provided all the meals to these 164 people who were randomized. So very impressive undertaking. Um, and the degree of control there is so important because you know what they were eating. You don't have to guess. Um, so the quality of the evidence is very high. So let's talk about what the different diets were. So all three diets were kept stable at 20% protein, and then the low-carb diet was 20% carbs, 60% fat. So total calories were 21% saturated fat. The medium carb was 40% carbs, 40% fat, with the total calories being 14% saturated fat. And the high-carb was 60% carbs, 20% fat, with the total calories being 7% fat. Now they wanted this to also be a weight stable diet, so they adjusted the caloric intake as needed to keep people weight stable. So by the end, there was really no significant difference in weight loss. So overall, they lost a half a kilogram, but no difference between the groups. And that was on purpose because they wanted to make sure the results weren't due to weight gain or weight loss, but instead were simply due to the components of the food basically that they were eating, not contributing to weight loss. The other thing that's important is the foods that were involved in each group were actually really similar. They were just in different proportions. So they were kind of eating the same foods, just different proportions. I was surprised to see even the low carb group had, had orange juice in it, but I guess maybe they just had a little bit of orange juice, whereas the high carb group had a lot of orange juice. So similar foods, different percentages. And the main findings were, I mean, when it came to LDL, there was no difference in the three groups with their LDL. And so this really is just one more piece of evidence where we already have plenty of evidence saying that for people following a low carb diet, whether they have high saturated fat or not, that there really isn't a significant change in the LDL on average. Now we know there's a small subset where the LDL might go up, but on average, it's very clear now that the LDL does not go up on a low carb diet. And we have other studies showing that ApoB doesn't go up and LDLP, the particle number doesn't go up. And that's even more important because ApoB is a better predictor of cardiovascular risk than LDL itself. And as we saw in the Verda Health trial, LDL went up by about 10%, but the ApoB did not go up at all, and the overall cardiovascular risk went down. And so in this, in this study, they didn't look at ApoB, but they looked at LDL itself, which did not move, which makes me think maybe the ApoB even went down a little bit. I would have liked to have seen that. But the other markers that they followed, one is the LPIR, the lipoprotein insulin resistance score. And this is one that is really important because there was a recent study um, from the Women's Health Initiative that was published showing that this marker had the strongest correlation to future cardiovascular risk, almost five times higher risk than LDL itself. And essentially, this is the lipoprotein um, pattern that you can see 
with or without metabolic syndrome or metabolic dysfunction. What's called the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, and then also sort of the size of the HDLs and LDLs. And basically, it's the um, beyond just the LDL count, what your lipids look like and what they're what they're made up of, which is very different for people who are metabolically healthy or not metabolically healthy. And the result, not surprising, significantly better for the low carb group and actually worsened a little bit for the high carb group, but significantly improved in the low carb group. So right away, no change in LDL itself, but a significant improvement in the type of LDLs and the triglyceride rich lipoproteins and triglycerides went down statistically significant HDL went up the things we we are con- we're used to seeing now uh, with low carb diets but the other thing was lipoprotein little a LP little a um, you could say it's an emerging risk factor it's sort of always been around but just getting a lot more attention recently uh, because now there are drugs being studied to um, combat it and to lower it, which are not really out yet, but drugs like PCSK9 inhibitors can reduce it about 15%. Niacin might be able to reduce it about 15%. And what this study showed was a low carb diet, higher in saturated fat can reduce it by about 15%. Now, I first kind of heard about that through Siobhan Huggins and Dave Feldman at cholesterolcode.com where Siobhan was talking about her end of one experience, how a low carb high fat diet reduced her LP level A. And I thought that's really interesting. And there are some um, there is some evidence in the literature about that as well. And here's one more, that a low-carb diet can actually reduce the LP little a by about 15%. Now, is that enough to reduce cardiovascular risk? That part's a little unknown still. And I guess it depends on where you start from and where you end up. But clearly a benefit, right? You want, uh, in general, it seems like you would want a lower LP little a. So clearly a benefit. All right, so how do we wrap this up? Well, it, it's one more piece of the puzzle that one, saturated fat by itself is not the concern, right? Because the, the observational studies showing that saturated fat is associated with a higher risk of heart disease and is associated with higher LDL, most of those are in observational studies where people are just making their own decisions. And there's the healthy user bias, uh, there's food frequency questionnaires, there's plenty of things to make that data very, very weak. But the other thing is most of the saturated fat studies looking at LDL have been in high carb, high saturated fat diets. So is there reason to think a lower carb, high saturated fat diet might have a different effect? Well, yeah, there clearly is. And here we have the evidence to show why that's the case. That it is indeed the case that in a low carb environment, the higher saturated fat does not raise LDL on average. Right? We always have to say on average because there are hyper responders whose LDL does go up significantly. And these were not thin athletic people who tend to more likely be hyper responders, although not always. These people were obese and overweight trying to lose weight. So it's pretty clear though in that population that the risk of a low carb, high saturated fat diet is really minimal because it's not gonna increase your LDL and it's actually going to likely decrease your cardiovascular risk by affecting the LPIR, the size and density of your LDL, your triglycerides, your HDL, and of course, your blood sugar and your insulin, which is why so many people start low carb diets in the first place. So I think I think we need studies like this and they're so important to show doctors. It doesn't mean you have to use low carb in everybody, but gosh, we really need to get over that fear of what happens to your cardiovascular risk and your LDL if I put you on a low carb diet that God forbid has some saturated fat. Now let's talk about saturated fat a little bit more. Again, I have said before in this in this video and in others, a low carb diet doesn't have to be high in saturated fat. It can be low saturated fat. So why would we even promote saturated fat? Well, because people enjoy foods that have saturated fat in them. And having healthy weight loss, sustainable healthy weight loss, a big part of that is enjoying your food, enjoying your meals. It's gonna make you more compliant. And let's face it, like we're emotional, we, we'd like to take pleasure in food. So if you can have that as part of a healthy weight loss program, that's a win-win situation. And many of the foods that are higher in saturated fat, people enjoy and will help them be more compliant. So it makes sense that if saturated fat is not inherently dangerous, we should be promoting it for people who enjoy it. If you don't enjoy meat and eggs, 
uh, chicken thighs with the skin on. If you don't enjoy those foods that are higher in saturated fat, of course, you don't have to eat them. But if you do, there's no reason to avoid them, especially if you're following a low carb diet. And that's what studies like this show. So we've got plenty more resources that reinforces this at dietdoctor.com. And we've got plenty of recipes that are lower carb, um, higher protein with, you know, some with moderate high fat, some with higher fat, with saturated fat, without saturated fat. You can sort of dial in what you want through our personalized meal planner questionnaire and get the meal planner for you, just picking the recipes that you really, you really are going to enjoy. So check that out at dietdoctor.com. And if you thought this video was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe and you'll get more uh, updates for us here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody.